Hi folks, Richard here, and today I've got an interesting little video for you, which is about this uh, Ravel 1600 scale USS Enterprise from Star Trek, the original series. And this one was uh, uh, another gift that I made to someone. Actually, I made this as a Christmas present for my wife about 10 years ago now. Um, it's still going strong. And this one is pretty cool because it's um, all run by an Arduino nano microcontroller. Um, and it's fully illuminated as well. Uh, for this one, I've actually got a full build log on the blog site. So there's a great big long blog that shows step by step how this was made. Um, so if you fancy making one of these yourselves, you can head over to the blog and I'll show you that in a moment. Um, but before that, what we'll do is I'm just going to grab another camera, dim the lights, and I'll give you a bit of a tour around so you can see what it's all about. Okay, so we've got the lights dimmed down a little bit so you can hopefully see the uh, the illuminations a little bit better. So I'll give you a bit of a walk around the uh, USS Enterprise. Um, so you can see on the front, probably the, the most striking thing is the uh, the rotating, uh, I think they're called Boussard collectors, if my Star Trek terminology is correct. Um, so you can see those spinning around there, doing their thing. Each one of those is actually like an array of colored LEDs and the Arduino is programmed to cycle those around so they look like they're spinning. So there's actually nothing moving in there. It's just the LEDs giving that impression. And as we look on the top, you see we've got a couple of flashing nav lights, probably port and starboard. And we've got the uh, other sort of little, uh, I guess they're probably windows in the sides of the saucer. Um, and this is a great little kit, the Ravel 1600 kit. Uh, really goes together really nicely. But one of the problems, in fact, probably the only problem with the kit is you can see these panel lines I've got on the top of the dish. Um, they weren't on the real thing. So the real model for the original series of Star Trek, they didn't have these panel lines. And they've made these really thick as well, really deep. Um, now I know some people with these have uh, actually filled them with filler and sanded them. I didn't bother on this. Um I don't, I'm not too worried about having not done that. I think it still looks fine, but that's the only sort of criticism of the kit, really. So anyway, let's bring you down lower. You can see around the side there. So you see even more lights on the sides and more lights underneath, a couple of flashing lights underneath the saucer dish. And I'll bring you around the other side for a bit of a look around there, if I can. So there we go. Now it's powered off the mains, just got a mains power adapter in the back and it plugs in on a little DC jack socket and there's also a little switch just down here so you can do the O-N-O-F-F -F feature. And uh, yeah, there you go. So like I said, I've got a full build log of this on the website. So. What we'll do in a moment is we'll hop over to the website and I'll show you that and I'll uh, I'll talk you through some of the things on there. Okay, so what I'll do as well is I'm just going to, if I can without breaking it, flip it over and give you a quick look underneath so you can see the, uh, the gubbins inside. And uh, so there you can see we've got the Arduino Nano, tiny little microcontroller. Really nice because it just fits in there under the base without any mods. Next to it is a little bit of Vero board, which is our resistor array, and the resistors are all for basically making the LEDs the right brightness. We use different resistors to make the LEDs brighter or dimmer. You can see the cables there, they're all laced with lacing tape, which is a really sort of classic old wireman technique for tidying cables. Um, really good for this because uh, cable ties just be too bulky to get in there. And lacing, uh, lacing just looks nice as well. And then we've got the uh, three and a half mil jack, and there we've got the little switch on the side as well. So um, I say much more info on that, including all the circuit diagrams, source code, all you need on the uh, blog site. So uh, yeah, I thought you might be interested in seeing that. Okay, so we'll go over and we'll have a look at the uh, build log. As I said, I when I built this, I did a full build log with step-by-step -step photos showing you all the stages of how it's done. So there's pictures of the paint job and the build and the lighting. We've also got lots of wiring diagrams, uh, source code and all that stuff. So let's head over to the blog site and take a look. So if you go over to um, radbo blog.radboogie.com and I'll put a link to this in the description below. 
And if you scroll down and go to the illuminated 1600 Revell US uh, Enterprise Star Trek, the original series build log. Now, maybe you can help me with this. I never know. Is it Revell or Revel? I know some people call it Revel model kits. I, for some reason, call it Revell. Reveal? Revel? I don't know. Let, if you know what, how it's pronounced, let me know in the comments because I always sort of, um, yeah, potato, potato, I suppose. Anyway, let's go and have a look at the build log and I'll talk you through some of that. So this is a build of the Revell uh, USS Enterprise, the original series. And this is a 1600 scale model. This one came from Hobbycraft in the UK, I believe. And they cost, I think it cost me about 30 quid. That's 30 GBP, British pounds. You can pick them up for about 35 now, I think. So they're not a really expensive kit, but a nice little kit it is, as I said before, a nice little kit, really. There is another kit out there, which is the uh, Polar Lights which is a really kind of popular build. And that's the 1350 scale, probably twice as big, but probably 10 times the price. They can go up to sort of 300 quid to buy. So this is a much more kind of accessible kind of level, I suppose. But anyway, um, what I did here, basically, um, this is a build log, which I did about 10 years ago, as you can see from the date. And with this, um, we basically show you all the things to do with making the model. So here you can see the instructions the decals, some shots of the sprues, so you can see how that looks. And as we scroll down, you'll see that we start to get into the actual builds. A lot of sprue with this, isn't there? So I won't, I'm not going to read the whole blog. You can read that for yourself, but we'll just flick through and have a look at some of the sort of um, salient points, really. So you can sort of see the preparation here, because it's illuminated. I've covered the inside with black paint, because you don't want the light to kind of shine through the uh, surface of the model. You only want the light to shine out of the windows. And so there's detailed instructions here on how to sort of scuff up the glass to make it nice and diffuse. So the inside of the saucer, that was all done with LED strips. And you see, I took quite a lot of time working out how to sort of get the lighting to look good. You could just put, we call them glass, but you know, you put the little clear plastic pieces in and you could just put lights behind, but it's just a bit stark. So a lot of this build is actually tweaking the lighting, just balancing the lighting, getting it to look nice. So we're getting on with some paints and you can you see um, as the model evolves over time, uh, here we're just working on the Bissard collectors, I think we said they were. I think that's what they're called anyway, that's something like that. Um, so you know, here you can see how they were constructed, little um, bits of plastic drilled out for the LEDs to go in. And a diagram here, this was a diagram I did for myself because uh, the, the sequencing of the lights has to be quite precise really to look correct. So I made guides for myself to know which LEDs went in which holes and uh, they're, well, they're all available here on the site for you. So more detail about how the LEDs were arranged. And this is using the LED lighting strips. So this is sort of the, the prep for those, uh, how they were fixed in and all that sort of stuff. So lots of detail in, in the build. Like I said, I'm not going to walk through it here because you can read all about it on the website if you want to go and see how it was all done. So you can see here, this is actually, um, this is what's known as a wiring schedule. I had a lot of people actually have commented to say, you know, can you give us a circuit diagram for this? And which I did, I, I subsequently drew up a circuit diagram and that's, sort of at the end of the blog, which we'll see in a bit. But generally when you're wiring things, I mean, I used to work as a wireman years ago and we didn't work to circuit diagrams. Wiremen, when you're wiring things, you work to a wiring schedule. Basically, you can see here that, you know, this is just a list of, of what wire goes from where to where kind of thing. So a wiring schedule is much more handy. It's just basically a spreadsheet of where the wire comes from and where it goes to. A circuit diagram doesn't really tell you that as such. So anyway, moving along, we've got uh, more detail on the wiring. Here you can see the Arduino. Uh, here, the Arduino is built on a breadboard for testing. So I just put the Arduino on a breadboard, which it just lets you sort of plug it in really easily without having to solder or create anything. You don't have to sort of actually make the circuitry. You can just plug wires into holes and work it all out that way. And you can see we're starting to get a bit of lighting on the go. Um, there's a video here just showing a sort of preview of what it looked like, but you've obviously just seen that because this is a new video. Again, just more sort of little details here. We've got some little light shields that were made to sort of shield the light, to stop the light sort of glaring direct, directly through the windows. More details on the, uh, the lighting. Here's a diagram showing how the LEDs were arranged and how to wire them up basically. 
this is quite interesting here. You can see with the LEDs, they're all um, fixed into this plastic um, surround, all glued in. And then what we do is to sort of economise on the wiring is we actually bend over the legs of the LEDs. And when they're all bent over, then you solder them up. So you can see here there's a ring of, um, that's probably like the uh, cathodes or the negative terminals all commoned up together. So you just solder them all together like that and then you take one wire off that and run that back to the source kind of thing. So a bit more detail on the uh, like the wiring schedule and things. Uh, some little more tips on wiring and stuff like that. There you can see that's the sort of the wiring loom behind one of the Bussard collector lights. Also, it's quite neat when you get all the wires and they're all sort of uh, twisted together like that. It's sort of feel like you're getting somewhere with it. So yeah, more notes on the uh, the lighting of the sides, how to fit the windows in. And like I said, you can follow along with this. You could build along to this. You don't have to go to all the extremes I did of the lighting. I did spend a lot of time perfecting the lighting kind of thing. So you don't have, you know, you can sort of uh, just take or leave bits of information here if you want. Same with things like the colours. I go to a lot of detail in the, in the build log about the colours I used and the choices. And, uh, you know, you don't have to use the same colours. You can use whatever colours you like for this, whatever you think looks good, you know. So artistic license, I guess that's what I'm looking for. So yeah, here we go, a bit more sort of info on painting up some of the pieces and you see it's starting to take shape a little bit now and a bit more on the lighting. And uh, so yeah, again, we sort of discussed the, the coloring because in building this, I wanted it to be kind of like a replica of the real thing. Well, when I say the real thing, I mean, obviously it wasn't a real USS Enterprise. What was that? Don't want to upset anybody. Um, now, the, the, when I say the real thing, I mean the model. When they filmed this, um, if I scroll down here, you can see there's um, William Shatner, and he's holding what was called the three-foot model. So that was one of the models they built to film with. But the main model they used was called the 11-foot model, and it was literally 11 feet long. It was the size of a small car. Now, I don't know what it's like today. Sort of 10 years ago, it was really difficult to find any kind of pictures of the USS Enterprise. You know, you'd think, oh, this thing was in a TV show, and it was on, on telly, and, you know, it must have just been filmed loads. There'd be loads of pictures of it. <laughs> no, it's really hard to find good pictures. Um, a lot of the images I found for reference material were kind of fan art. People had like CGI'd the thing and then they'd put sort of weathering on it and soot marks and sort of battle damage and things. And the real thing is you can see in the photos here, there's another one here with Leonard Nimoy holding it. The actual model was really clean. You know, it was just cleanly done. Um, so that's kind of what I tried to imitate when I did this. My sort of reaction from doing quite a lot of scale modeling was to kind of like, oh, weather it, you know, I'll put all kinds of soot marks and, you know, put some bullet holes in it and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, I'd sort of rein, rein that in a bit. Now, incidentally, when they actually, um, with the 11 foot model, it's actually, as far as I know, it resides in the Smithsonian in America. And uh, they had it restored. So some guy came in to restore this thing. And as I understand it, he kind of, went crazy, put all kinds of panel lines on it and he did all kinds of weathering. And it's like, well, no, you kind of wrecked it, you know? I think it may have been re-restored again fairly recently, but um, I, I don't know about that. So, um, but anyway, yeah, quite interesting. That really hard finding reference images. So um, the same might be easier today. So here you can see, oh, here's a shot. You can actually see um, we've got some ballast in there. So you can see there's a big lead weight in the, uh, in the back of it to balance it out because it's quite front heavy without it. So, um, Always something you want to remember if you're making a model kit. If it needs weight, then put it in before you glue it up. A number of times I've built a model and you, you know, you, you put it on these wheels and it just sits on its tail or whatever. Yeah, so a few more shots of that. And you see it's really starting to come together towards the end of the build, getting the stand on the go. Uh, here, experimenting with some decals. Back in the day, you'd, you'd like get decals with a model kit and um, you just basically cut them up, put them, soak them in water, stick them on, and that was it. You know, you didn't really fuss too much with them. But now you can get all kinds of decal setting solutions, which are really good because basically it means you put the decal onto the model, apply this decal setting solution, and that will sort of soften and melt the decal and mold it right into the surface. So that's what you can see here. We're just uh, going through some experiments to work out which decal setting solution is best. Not all decals are made equally. So you find with, say, decals from one model kit maker, they'll react with, say, Microsol, and then from another maker, they'll need solver set. You know, it's always worth experimenting a bit before you sort of go for it. And you see the results of that here in the recommendations as well. So there's the whole thing sort of shaping up and starting to sort of really come together. Another shot of it all completed there and some of the lighting. So, um, yeah, this is uh, this was a, a really fun build, really. It took it longer than I thought. It always does. My projects always take way longer than I think. 
you know, I think, oh, it'll be a nice little weekend build, you know, and then three months later, I'm still working on it. But that's all part of the fun, isn't it, really? So, yeah, so here we've got a bit of info on the uh, the circuitry. So if you want to get on and illuminate the model, you can do this. And bear in mind as well, you, you know, the the lighting for this model, you could use this on any model. If you've got a model with flashing lights and things like that, and you need to drive LEDs, then the circuitry would work just as well on anything, really. So here you can see uh, resistors and things, resistors for the LEDs. And the circuitry, as I showed you in the video earlier, this is just, uh, we've got a still of the uh, the circuitry there. And then we talk a little bit about Arduinos. And if you keep going here, we've got a bit about um, the the code. So we've got a really good description of what how the code works here. And this is the actual source code. So you can download this, copy and paste this, and you can use this. I won't walk through the code here other than just to sort of describe it briefly, which is that the code is basically built into some classes. So you've got a, a chaser class and a flashing LED class. All that means is that if you want to recreate this, you've got two sort of like pre-built code modules within this that you can just use to control either chasing LEDs, like on the Busard collectors where they're just rotating around, the LEDs are chasing in a circle, or flashing LEDs that are just flashing on and off. So this really simplifies it. Um, as I say, I don't, it's not my intention to really do a code walkthrough here or anything. All the code is here if you want it. And if you've got any questions about the code, hit the comments on this video or leave a comment on the blog site, you know, and we can, uh, I'll see if I can um, answer your questions on that. So yeah, so there's all the code for the thing. It's not a huge amount of code. It looks worse than it is, but it's highly reusable. So if you want to say, if you're building something completely different to this and you wanted flashing LEDs, then, you know, you could use this. As I said, I had quite a lot of people ask me for, for a circuit diagram and I didn't use one to build it. I didn't use a circuit diagram to build the, the enterprise with. So I did this one afterwards because I know it helps people. This, this does help people's understanding of what's going on, you know, if, uh, helps you to visualize all the LEDs and all the other bits. So there is a circuit diagram here, so you can reference that if you need more info. Got some uh, references here for the colors of the LEDs on the port and starboard Bussard collectors. Bussard, Bussard, potato, potato again, isn't it? It's diffi difficult, it's talking lark, isn't it? Hey. Um, yeah, a bit, of, uh, a bit of Ohm's law here if you want to know about working out um, how to calculate resistors for LEDs. Um, long story short, with working out resistors for LEDs, say if you're working on like a five volt supply from like an Arduino or five volt signal from an Arduino, just start with a 250 ohm resistor. That's gonna limit the current to about 20 milliamps and then just put in higher values from there to make it dimmer. That's kind of what I do. I don't, I sometimes I'll calculate LEDs, but don't get sort of bogged down in the science, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, anyway, that's kind of, um, that's the USS Enterprise 1600 scale Ravel model kit, fully illuminated and Arduino powered. I hope you enjoyed watching that. I hope you found it interesting. And I hope as well that you um, build your own and follow the blog and uh, I hope it helps you. So any comments, leave them in, on the video or head over to the blog and comment on the blog. Until next time, thanks for watching.